Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. We're going to talk waterfowl this week. My guest is Mike Szymanski. Mike is the head waterfowl biologist with the department. Mike, you and your crews are compiling data that you gathered from your breeding duck surveys. Is that correct? Kind of explain what the uh, survey is all about. Sure, Tom. Every year in May, uh, usually early to mid-May, we head out with four crews. There are two guys in each crew, and we cover about a little over 1,800 miles of transect throughout the state. That's uh, uh, eight blocks basically that run north and south mm -hmm. uh, where everybody is counting the docks and wetlands on each side of the road and uh, we we run it uh, over about a week period and uh, we count uh, eighth of a mile each side of the truck so 220 yards each side of the road we're we're counting everything that's and you within drive that space. really slow it's interesting the way that you it can go yeah it can get uh, <laughs> pretty slow going at times you know just a couple miles an hour when you have a lot of water and a lot of ducks that you got to get tallied up and and make sure you're getting them before they move around or anything like that and this isn't just counting ducks now this is counting species it's counting their whole social mores the whole thing Right. That's right. It's a very important uh, component to what we do. Um, to interpret the numbers, you, you can't really just look at the, the ducks that are out there. You have to have them separated by species and then see what they're doing kind of with their breeding status. So you're looking at if it's a pair sitting there, that's pretty straightforward. But sometimes you have lone males sitting by themselves or groups of males with a hen, and those need to be singled out so that we can... Um, know how to expand the numbers basically because a, a lone drake is indicative of a, a hen sitting somewhere nearby in a nest so you want to turn that into an indicated pair. You do these every year, right? Yes, we do it every year. We've been doing it since 1948. 70 years. This coming is up, one. coming up on 70 years, yep. It's one of the longest running uh, wildlife surveys in the world, particularly for waterfowl. Mike, you don't just count ducks on this survey. You kind of take note of what the water situation is. We have pretty dry spring. Uh, how are things looking? We did. Um, you know, we don't, we don't really break down the water as to how um, it necessarily is, is functioning within a wetland, but we do, we do count the wetlands that have water. And if they've got enough water to float a duck, we count them. Uh, like you said, it, it was very dry this spring. It was very dry in the fall and winter too, and that, that has a lot, of, lot to play into it also. Um, we did get a pretty good shot of rain in April. It helped a little bit, but we are still very dry out there. Our wetland numbers are down quite a bit from, from last year, and last year they were down a fair bit from the year before. So we're, we are probably in like the bottom third of what we see for wetland conditions um, statewide. Um, especially in the eastern part of the state. The eastern part of the state is very dry. You get up further uh, west into the northwest part of the state, it's, it's actually still decent up there. Not super wet, but it's okay. What some people don't understand, Mike, is that even though CRP is generally linked with upland birds, the loss of CRP also not so great for uh, nesting ducks either. Yeah, losing CRP is, is uh, an important impact for pretty much all ground nesting birds in the state. Most waterfowl that we have breeding in North Dakota are actually nesting in the uplands in those CRP acres. Um, the loss has, you know, some pretty serious implications to what we produce for ducks in North Dakota. You're done compiling your data. Uh, let's talk about the survey itself and where what we're looking at for uh, for ducks this fall. Well, surprisingly, our duck numbers didn't actually go down all that much from last year, even though we have literally almost half as much water on the landscape. A lot of that water was very ephemeral water. Um, you know, we, we still have uh, semi-permanent wetlands that have decent water conditions in them. And really what part of it is we, t we took our big hit on ducks the year before uh, when we went down uh, almost 25%. This year, we're only down about 5% from last year. So it's, it's one of those things where we're still kind of in a little bit of a lag time. The, the two springs were, were somewhat similar where they were very dry and then we got a little shot of rain um, kind of coming into the survey. 
So we're, we're still sitting pretty good on duck numbers. Our duck numbers are actually still in the top third of what we've seen over the long term. But, um, you know, it's, it's only a matter of time before we start um, seeing the effects of poor habitat conditions and, and repercussions on reproduction in the future. Okay, what people need to understand is that we're coming off some years where we had massive numbers of ducks too, right? Yeah, very high numbers of ducks, uh, particularly the last 22 years. This year ranks very near the bottom in the last 22 years when we had that sort of magic combination of lots and lots of water in the landscape and lots and lots of CRP in the landscape. So, you know, we're drying up and we're losing uh, some of that upland nesting cover that the ducks need. Only time will tell what effects it has. Um, you know, another, another aspect too is to, you know, counting ducks in a situation like this when wetlands are drying up is we probably actually see more of the ducks. There's not wetland cover out there that they're hiding in as well. There's, there's more mud margins that they're sitting on. There's not a lot of cattails growing up when wetlands are drying down. So we probably had a little bit better observation factors this year for counting ducks. Any big surprises in the data? Uh, I would say the biggest surprise is just that the numbers didn't go down more. But again, it kind of comes back to, well, we already <laughs> took a big hit a couple years ago, just, just last spring, and, and the observation factors were probably up. So it, that was a little bit surprising. We thought maybe duck numbers would be down a little bit more. All in all, a pretty good year for waterfall enthusiasts? Yeah, you know, uh, from what I understand, Saskatchewan still has decent water. Uh, there are still a lot of ducks out there. I mean, North Dakota, we're carrying almost three and a half million ducks on, on the breeding side of things. That's, that's a lot. That's still way above the long-term average going back to 1948. Um, you never know what spring will hold out either if we get a little bit more rain and the ducks can kind of eke one out uh, with, with their nesting and, and brood rearing conditions. We do still have some CRP out there. We have uh, targeted CRP acres that seem to be doing uh, good things for, for duck production. So uh, we're, we're still looking okay. We'll still produce some ducks and we'll still have some ducks hopefully coming down this fall. All right, Mike, thanks. Thank you, Tom. Here are some important dates for you waterfall hunters. The opening date for early goose season has not been finalized yet, but it's usually set around mid-August. The youth waterfall season opens on Saturday, September 17th. The opener for early resident waterfall season is Saturday, September 24th, and the regular waterfall season is set to begin on October 1st. Regulations and season limits are generally set in August. Make sure you're properly licensed, you purchase a federal waterfall stamp, and you're HIP certified. For Mike Szymanski and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. See you again next week.